what if you try to live in joy? And what if them to be loved? We're just friends like we always did. Believe me. Oh, believe me. Yes. I feel really empowered now, hearing your talk that I am actually just by my diet doing something. Uh, where do you see in um, our future in the planet the place for the demonstrations? Do you think they are positive or negative? The demonstrations, did you say? Andy and Dani, the, um, uh, yes. there is the demonstrations that are going on at the moment. Yeah. In yeah, the, um, the demonstrations are absolutely essential. We've got to make our point. We've got to get public. We've got to get loud about these things. And it, it, it amuses me that the Queensland government put in the new laws, anti-rabid vegan laws, for example. That's because were being noticed. Not that I've been involved in those, but I do admire those people who stand up for that sort of thing. I mean, if, if, you, if you can provoke a reaction like that from government, it means you're making a point, a strong point. So success, you know, and we've got to keep loud about these things. You know, this Greta Thunberg, this 16-year-old girl, she stood on the steps of the uh, parliament for weeks by herself before she was noticed and then it steamrolled you know one person can make a big difference and we do you know that's that's the future governments must react to that the, the australian media is, media is pretty well controlled but it still leaks through definitely protests are useful yes that was really an interesting presentation um just out of curiosity what what would you say to producers on the land, um, especially in areas that are not arable um, and not suitable for growing crops? What, like, what, what's, what's the solution plan for them? That's a, that's a really good question. What do we do about the grazing lands that we can't grow crops on? And what about those farmers? Really good question. Um, farmers are amazing people, by the way. We should be so thankful for them because they provide what we eat. But farmers are not um, ogres. Farmers produce what we eat. And farmers are among the most incredibly uh, flexible, incredibly optimistic people on earth. They'll go through three years of drought and they'll think the rain's coming next year. You know, they, they, they suffer the, the weather. They suffer... Um, having to pour more inputs onto their crops. They suffer markets going up and down. They suffer people changing their diets. Um, but they're still farmers. It's a way of life. So there are those farmers that can't grow crops. Okay, so what do they do? Well, if there was a proper price on carbon, if farmers could be paid to plant trees or at least to not cut them down those farmers that are on the rangelands that can't grow crops are ideally placed they have large areas of, of properties that could be one of the that could be doing the best service for humanity right now those lands could be could grow the trees that will save us from the climate catastrophe, from the biodiversity crisis, from the water cycle crisis. So many things could be reversed if we replant, if we regrow those forests. So if there was a price on carbon, and there's a little bit now, there's, a, there's an initiative called the Carbon Farming Initiative. There's a few million dollars each year are given to farmers to do just that, to grow trees. But if that few million was hundreds of millions, those farmers would turn, okay, look, I've had it, I can't produce beef anymore. It's, it's the fifth year of drought. I throw my hands up, but look, I can grow trees. That back paddock down there, it grows without me doing anything. Keep cutting it down, but they still keep coming back. 
hey, I could leave it and get paid for it. You know, that's the future. That's, that's the answer for those farmers. And if you're a farmer, you grow what people buy. So if trees are part of that mix, that's the answer. Yes, uh, any other? When you um, had those <coughs> pasture lands, forest lands, and there was that little bit for um, cropping or something, mm. if, if the, in the blue sky thinking the, uh, the, the population of Australia nearly went vegan, is that enough land to provide enough food? Yes. Or would they have to use that's some of that pasture land for food as well. Sorry, I've just... That's, that's also a really good question. <laughs> and we've just done the figures. I've just done the sums, globally and for Australia. The, when we did the Beyond Zero Emission Land Use Plan, we did exactly that. Now, if you take out, of all the crops in Australia, right, forget the areas that are, are exported. Most of our wheat is exported. So take that aside. If you look at those crops that are consumed in Australia, Two-thirds of those crops are fed to animals, not people. So they're recycled through this very inefficient system that comes back to us eventually in the form of meat and eggs and dairy. If we were to go vegan, we wouldn't need that two-thirds of the cropland to go through this inefficient system. We could eat those crops directly. So in other words, Australia could support twi more than twice its population now just on the domestic crops if we didn't have other mouths to feed, the livestock mouths to feed. So no, we would definitely not need more uh, cropping area in Australia. Globally, it's exactly the same story. Half of the world's crops are fed to animals. And if we repurpose that cropping area into food crops rather than feed crops, we could feed at least our population again. Well, at least half. We're expecting another 4 billion on the planet. Some say 10 to 11 billion by the end of the century. I don't think it's going to get to that, quite frankly, because as we mature, as we grow, as women in particular are educated, the population rate drops. For last year, for the first time in China, the replacement population rate was not up to replacement. In other words, Chinese aren't having kids anymore. It's China. And they're not having a lot of immigrants either, like we are. So the population won't explode. India, however, will. Africa will. But they have, the same thing will happen there. All developed nations, their population drops. You look at Japan, they're incredibly racist, so they don't take immigrants. Their population's been dropping for 20 years. They, they've abandoned villages because they don't have the people. The only people there are the ones who are in their 90s. <laughs> and it's exactly the same in, Western, in Eastern Europe where, where the younger people have been exiting and the, and the steady population, no, they're not steady, they drop. The replacement birth rate is not keeping up. I mean, the birth rate's not keeping up to replacement. Same in Australia. If we didn't have immigration, our population would be dropping. Governments hate that. They want growth. They want economic stimulus. So they promote immigration, even though they don't say they're promoting immigration. <laughs> it's a weird world. <laughs> yes? yes uh, would you agree that uh, these plant-based weeds are the short-term transition to whole foods due to the fact that they have to be processed with salt, sugar, powders, fibers, preservatives. Good question too. Who, who would eat a Beyond Beef Burger, Beyond Meat Burger? Anyone here? Yeah, um, would you? No. Well, if you were a big meat eater and your girlfriend was pushing you, would you try it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Personally, I've been vegan for, I mean, vegetarian vegan for 20 something years, so um, it doesn't appeal to me. But for those who are big meat eaters, it's probably the perfect thing that they need to satisfy that hunger, but, be, but not have the impact. 
So yeah, it's probably a transition food. Uh, in a few generations, I expect that um, um, we probably won't need those things. We'll be coming up with imaginative made from the vegetable, made from the crop foods. We were talking earlier about this guy in the States who was one of the internet pioneers, a guy by the name of Salish Rao. Dr. Salish Rao, he's written a, a, a number of books and the latest one is called Carbon Yoga and he's looked at the deforestation rate, the, the loss of water, the population growth rate, uh, the, the, the uh, growth in, in the temperature, so global warming and he's graphed all of these things, to the, the, the um, biodiversity loss for example, he's graphed all of these things and he he's figures that by 2026 the world will hit its limit. These, the growth of all of those things that I talked about is actually exponential. It's going up like this. So by 2026, we will hit the limit, the absolute limit. But what he's also done is he's graphed the number of vegans in the world, the number of people who eat 100% plant-based. And he's also graphed that to reach 100% of the population by 2026. Isn't that amazing? But it's exponential. So when you're on an exponential curve, you look back on the curve, it looks pretty flat. But you look forward on the curve and it goes up like that. So he's saying that by 2025, we will be maybe still complacent about a lot of these things. Maybe less than half of the population will be vegan or mostly plant-based. But by 2026, because it's exponential, it will flip like that. So that's happening. A lot of things that we're looking at are exponential. And exponential is scary because you look back and it doesn't look like anything's happening, but you look forward and bingo, you're gone. So I, I thought that was really interesting. 2026, if you're interested in when the world will, will go vegan, it's 2026. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Um, have you seen that? Uh, I can't remember who put that out, but um, current plant foods that we produce, they estimated it's enough to feed 11 billion humans currently. Um, have you come across that one? I can't remember who. They actually did like a yeah. proper scientific study and they looked at how much plant protein and calories we produce, yes. including livestock. And that amount of food is enough to feed 11 billion humans. Yes. Right now. Exactly right. Yeah, so yeah. Have you come across that one? Yes. Yeah. I, could, I can dig out the reference for you later. But yes, that's true. The amount of food that we, we send through this inefficient process through animals, if we were to repurpose that as food rather than feed, we could support another 4 billion on the planet. So yes, it will support, we can support the current population using the current cropping areas. No trouble. Yes. How, how bioavailable are the nutrients in an exclusively plant-based diet compared to the other nutrients in the comparison to a diet supplemented with animal based products? How bioavailable? Yeah. So um, exclusively plant-based and you've got the range of different nutrients in it. How bioavailable are those nutrients? Because mm. in developing countries, which yes. is predominantly there is a high proportion of micronutrient deficiencies. So if, if, if there is a high proportion yeah. of plant-based diets, will we see a rise in micronutrient deficiencies? Yeah, um, th that's a question that's been troubling a lot of people. Um, in some developing nations, there is a lack of nutrition, a lack of energy, calories, a lack of protein. Um, The answer to it is, is a little complex, but there is no question that a plant-based diet can provide total nutrition for any human at any stage of life, pregnant, small children, uh, etc. Athletes, um, 
there's a great documentary on Netflix called The Game Changers. Watch that documentary, you'll be blown away. Um, elite athletes are now going plant-based and not telling their competitors because that's giving them an edge. A lot of it's marketing. We're told so much that we need dairy, we need meat to be big and strong. Um, as, as Arnold Schwarzenegger says in that, in that documentary, he says, it's not fact, it's marketing. So there, there it is. I mean, there is so much information out there now that, that and there are so many myths, and that's one of them. That, where do we get our protein? Where do we get our nutrition? The trouble with every food is the package that it comes with. If you eat meat, if you eat beef, comes with a lot of protein, comes with some iron, which is an animal iron, which is called the heme iron, um, and it comes with a few trace minerals, but it also comes with no fibre. It comes with no phytonutrients. It comes with very few um, uh, antioxidants, very few. So the package of nutrition that we have the plant-based nutrition is way better for the human than any meat and animal nutrition. It's the, it's the package that's important. I would suggest maybe it's the um, in emerging countries or countries that are um, poorer, they may not be able to have the diversity of, of plant-based foods either. So maybe they well, the Irish used to live on potatoes and they were um, nutrient deficient, you know, in, in um, time, you know, some times ago and, and mm. because they they only ate potatoes and onions really. So maybe it's the diversity of the diet they're able to have. You know, when you say they're micronutrient nutrient deficient. So that that's a guesstimate that might be. Because we yeah. have so much diversity that we can have here. Yeah, a lot of it's education too. If, if, if those Irish had been eating the leaves of the potato as well, perhaps, perhaps they, were, they would have got the, new, particularly sweet potatoes, perhaps they would have had the right nutrition. The same sort of thing in Southeast Asian nations, they love their white rice. White rice has such a huge uh, glycemic index. It's, it's, and, and little nutrients because the, the, it's not a whole food. But, and they were taught, but, but eating um, the whole grain, rice, reversed those nutritional deficits that they were having. There's, there's a lot of science papers around that as well. It's education, it's, it's you know, uh, it's information on nutrition. That's, that field's exploding. I think, I think we're done. I want a few trying to live in joy. I want a fam to be loved. Yeah, we're just friends like we always did. Believe me. just like you please try to understand we do feel like you sing it hey dear humans we love just like you please try to understand we do feel like you I want a few trying to live in joy. I want of them to be loved. We're just friends like we always did. Believe me. Oh, believe me. Hey, dear humans. We love just like you. Please try to understand, we do feel like you.